tau overflows. Mind cannot understand enlightenment. Your mind is the problem. Your logic is the problem. And your arguments too are the problems. They are on the surface. They look true, but they deceive. They are not true. For example, look how the mind's structure functions. The mind divides everything in two. But nothing is divisible. Nothing is divisible. You cannot divide that which is but mind goes on dividing it it says that this is life and this is death what is the actual fact the actual fact is both life and death are the same you are both alive and dying this very moment you are doing both rather you are both death and life Mind says this is day and this is night. When Gautam Siddharth, the old man who died in Gautam Buddha, was seeking, he was a visible form. When the enlightenment happened, that form completely dissolved into the formless. For a moment there was a gap. There was no one. Then from that formless, a new form arose. This was Gautam, the Buddha. Because the body continues in the same way, we think that there is a continuity, but inner reality changes completely. Because the body continues in the same way, that is why Gautam Buddha, that Gautam Siddharth, has now become Gautam the Buddha. He has become a Buddha. But Buddha himself says, I am not he who was seeking. I am a totally different one. This is the situation of each one of you. When you come in the company of the awakened one, you are seeking. And now, that seeking is no more. The person that was seeking is no more. You were a child once. You lived as child consciousness. You has a child's body as well. Now the child has died. Where has he gone? He died. Who is this child that died? The body will continue as a continuity in a new format. But the child consciousness has died. There is no continuity of that consciousness. Deep within, you are a totally different person. Look at it. Look at yourself. When you came in the company, what you were, what was your way of thinking, what was your consciousness, is it the same now? So that means... That consciousness, if we give it a form, is no more, has died. It is therefore difficult for the mind to conceive of this. And for mind, many things are difficult, but they cannot be denied just because they are difficult for the mind to understand. The mind has to yield to those impossibilities which are incomprehensible to it. Sex cannot yield to the mind. The mind has to yield to sex. This is one of the most basic inner facts. Remember, enlightenment is always a discontinuous phenomenon. The old simply disappears and new is born. The difference between bud and the flower is tremendous. When bud disappears, it becomes a flower. When seed disappears, 
it blossoms into a tree and on the tree first bed, bud comes then as the bud dissolves out of that a flower is born there has been another tradition it is a later tradition for those who have been insisting all through history that enlightenment is sudden not gradual but those who belong to it are very few they stick to the truth but they are bound to be very few because no following can be created if sudden enlightenment is the case you simply cannot understand it the process of the growth from bud or transformation of the bud into a flower is a gradual process which cannot be captured by your eyes but then when it happens suddenly one morning you get up and you see the bud is no more there in place of that there is a flower this is sudden so two things go simultaneously gradual water is gradually gaining temperature gaining momentum and then like a quantum leap it becomes vapors so too is your life everything is changing moment to moment your consciousness then all of a sudden when consciousness has transformed completely you notice it that you are not the same person that you had started the journey you simply cannot understand this so how can you follow it it is shocking to logical structure it seems absurd impossible but remember one thing then you move into deeper realms whether of matter or of mind you will have to encounter many things of which a superficial mind cannot conceive tertullian one of the greatest christian mystics has said i believe in god because god is the greatest absurdity i believe in god because mind cannot believe in god it is impossible to believe in god no proof no argument no logic can help the belief in god everything goes against him against his existence but tertullian says that is why i believe because only by believing in an absurdity can i move away from my mind only by believing in an absurdity can i move away from my mind this is beautiful if you want to move away from your mind you will need something of which your mind cannot conceive if your mind can conceive of it it will absorb it into its own system and then you cannot transcend the mind that is why every religion has insisted on some points which is absurd no religion can exist without a certain absurdity just as the foundation in it from that absurdity you either turn back and say i cannot believe so i will go away then you remain yourself or you take a jump a quantum leap you turn away from your mind and unless your mind is skilled the enlightenment cannot happen your mind is the problem your logic is the problem and your arguments too are the problem they are on the surface they look true but they deceive they are not true for example 
you look how the mind's structure functions. The mind divides everything in two, but nothing is really divisible. Existence is indivisible. You cannot divide it, but the mind goes on dividing it. It says that this is life and this is death. What is the actual fact? The actual fact is that both are the same. You are both alive and dying this very moment. Something, a part of you, certain cells are dying, new cells are coming into existence. You are doing both. Rather, you are both life and death. Mind says this is death and that is night. Mind divides. It says this is death and that is life. Not only does it divide, it says that both are opposites as enemies and that death is trying to destroy life and it looks okay. In a way, death is trying to destroy life. But if you penetrate deeper, deeper than mind, death is not trying to destroy life. You cannot exist without death. Death is helping you to exist. When this moment dies, it really does not die. Instead, it dissolves in the next moment that is coming. The childhood consciousness has dissolved into it. And as it dissolved, a new consciousness arose in you. And this is how things go on. It is every moment helping you to exist. For a single moment, death stops working, you will vanish. Death is every moment throwing away many parts in you which have become non-functional and redundant. Many cells die and they are removed by death. When they are removed, new ones are born. The number of cells at any particular time in the body remains the same. Certain dies, as many dies, so many new cells come into existence and are born. This is the fundamental phenomena, fundamental principle behind growing is you are growing, something is dying and something is being born continuously in you. This is a continuous process. Look deep into it, into yourself, into your way of life, your consciousness. When you came for the first time in the company of the awakened one, what was your way of thinking? What was your way of life? And is it same? If not, then that has dissolved. And out of the ash of that, a new consciousness evolved in you. And this process is continuously happening and will go add long enough for now.